Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hello, friends, and Merry Christmas season. Good to have you for another show today. Um, very important, but a little heavy on the shoulders, I guess, the topic today. Um, we're talking about injustice in America. I'm um, talking about the justice system, talking about lies from the top down. Um, we'll go back and revisit some of the events that happened in the year 2020 after the death of George Floyd and the implosion or explosion of the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation movement that is Marxist-driven, anti-Christian, anti-family, and how their influence, mob influence, has affected our justice system and the ongoing nightmare of the decline of America in Derek Chauvin's case, his trial, not been given a fair trial. We're going to talk with Seiko Woods about that. Um, we're, we're going to bring him in right now. He founded His Word, His Way Fellowship in Sugarland, Texas in 2009, and he served as a pastor teacher until 2016. He received his theological training at the College of Biblical Studies in Houston, Texas, and has received training in biblical counseling. I just want to bring him in right now and get to this uh, a couple topics right away. Seiko, so good to see you, brother. Hi. Hey, brother. Good to see you, man. Everybody's Thanksgiving holiday, even Christmas uh, holidays uh, coming forward. It would be a blessing as well. But thank you for having me on. You're welcome. I always tell people, keep your eye on those TV ads because you see all this red and green and all the wreaths <laughs> and all the presents. And it just talks about a holiday or holidays. And I'm going, I wonder what they're celebrating because they don't mention Christmas. But anyway, that's for another time. Yeah. Um, let's start with some good news first. And this is interesting on the abortion front. Over 32,000 babies have been saved since Roe v. Wade was overturned, the Dobbs decision. This is a study that has just come out recently. And actually, birth, the birth rate rose by an average of 2.3% in states that have a, a, an abortion ban in force. And I just want to share your thoughts on that, Seiko. Uh, this has been a battle for uh, many, many, many decades in America. The abortion agenda movement will not stop. They will yeah. not relent. They've even kicked it into hyperdrive since Roe v. Wade was overturned. But there is some good news coming out of this. Your thoughts? Yeah, uh, i never seen so many people on the left to be so angry and upset over the you know uh the saving of innocent babies and lives in the womb i mean these people yeah. seem to have have a having a conniption because roe v wade has not been overturned and they're putting it back to the states um which never really should be it should have been the issue in the first place you know all yes. life is precious as we already know that but the the sad reality is again you have people who are upset because we are we are as christians are in the business and in the agenda of saving lives. And um, I, I'm glad that there are there are people, there are a remnant of people. And you know what, Dave? You don't even have to be a Christian. You just have to have common sense to know that all life is precious. I mean, how mm. how innocent and defenseless do you have to be uh, than to be a baby, you know? Uh, so it's good news to hear that, you know, over 30,000 uh, babies' uh, lives have been spared and have been given a chance to live which is really a constitutional right uh if you if you think about it because they have life i mean life gives birth to life a human being gives birth to another human being and so uh to, just to have that now being being seen and of course that won't make mainstream media news as well you know that won't ever happen uh but you know thank god for those uh, of us who who value life who value freedom and who value liberty, uh, not just for one sect of people, but for all people, this is good news to hear. Be fruitful and multiply is one of the instructions we have from Scripture. And if you don't allow a baby to be born, uh, you are violating one of the commandments, not only murder, but you're violating, you're disobeying, be fruitful and multiply, the instruction to have family, you know, marriage, family. Um, also, Lila Rose, I want to comment on what she said she said, oh, uh, absolutely amazing. And she's been working at this for years. 32,000 boys and girls were saved, protected from being killed by abortion. Mm -hmm. This is why we do this work. And she called it a yeah. breathtaking wave of life. 
And think about it, 32,000 yeah. lives were allowed, allowed to be born, yeah. right <laughs> to life. Yeah, uh, It yeah. seems pretty basic to you and I, but uh, right. we know the left has this bloodlust and they they know abortion is a sacrament to mm -hmm. the left. It is so demonic. Your thoughts on that? I mean, it's a part of the Democratic Party's platform as well. They want to call it reproductive rights, but no, it's it's, it's legislated murder. Uh, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the Bible tells us, "Woe to the those who make unjust laws." And you know, we are living in that society. We're living in that day and time, brother. Where now, you know, I was I share with you the abortion clock. Um, it's called mm -hmm. number of abortions dot dot com. Uh, it's a very shocking, you know, sight to see. It's a clock. I mean, it's just like, you know, the national debt clock where it's constantly growing up, up and up. Well, the abortion clock, if you go there again, it's called na uh, number of abortions dot com. And you can see as of today's date, uh, over 19.5 million babies have been aborted since 1973, since Roe v. Wade. By Planned Parenthood, 10.2 million and counting uh, since uh, since uh, 1970. Wow. And, you know, the Guttmacher Institute and the Guttmacher Institute, Dave, is not a website or it's not an organization uh, of the right or even of the, the center right. It is a left leaning liberal website. Matter yeah. of fact, it's the sister uh, uh, company or sister organizations of Planned Parenthood. And they made their agenda clear that their their purpose and goal is to is to annihilate and to wipe out uh, the black uh, the black family particularly the black family. Of course, all life is precious, but they have an agenda. And so when you see, you know, uh, institutions like Planned Parenthood who have their their murder uh, facilities in uh, urban or we call it the hood or in rural neighborhoods, you, you, you know, there's an agenda. And, there's, a, and, there's an attack. Yeah. I, I want to emphasize the fact that is proven by research over. I think it's 79 percent oh. of the clinics are in minority neighborhoods right. on purpose and that That's right. that number of abortions on this uh, website you just mentioned 19.5 million black right. babies have been murdered since 1973 and yeah, i don't know how americans are able to turn the other way and and not this shouldn't this should be talked about but it's not yeah I want to read one part of this real quick. It says here on that website here where it's in, it's in one of the asterisk points in the uh, number of abortions dot com. It says, why do we include a black baby counter Two African-American religious based websites asked us to put in a black baby counter to highlight the disparity of the number of abortions in the black population? Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, had eliminating her view of here it is in quotes undesirables as an objective in her eugenics plan. You will find many large Planned Parenthood clinics in the inner cities. This is not my website. This yeah. is not the uh, the the Republicans website. This is not a conservative website. This is from this is from the Guttmacher Institutes. This is what their their words are in black and white. Yep. And we need to move on uh, to our, our main topic today. But I do want to mention now the flip side of our, the good news of 32,000 babies that have been saved since mm -hmm. the Dobbs decision. About 77 percent of Democrats in this new poll support abortion access. What does that mean? That means, well, it doesn't matter. A woman should be able to kill her child. Well, how yeah. else are you going to put that? They're just access is a flowery word. Um, right. Abortion for any reason, it says. Uh, it, so the support for abortion, interestingly enough, after the overturning of Roe v. Wade, is at mm -hmm. one of the highest levels on record. Final thoughts on this, Psycho? Um, again, it shows you that uh, voting and policies matter. Um, and, and, you know, an, an ignorant voter is a oh. voter for the left. I'm just mm -hmm. going to say that. An ignorant voter, an uninformed voter is a voter for the left. Uh, the more informed you are when it comes to policies, when it comes to issues of morality, then it's going to affect it's going to show in who you support and what you vote for. Now, this is not to say that because you you support morality, that that makes you righteous. No, what makes you righteous is what Christ has done for you and for me on the cross. But as Christians, I don't understand how any Christian can support any policy, any belief, any position that violates biblical Christianity. It is just, it just mind boggling yeah. to me. It is. It is. It's amazing. Their consciences have been seared. Amen. Um, 
Seiko Woods, this is one of the topics we need to spend more time on, and we are. Um, the trial of Derek Chauvin is going on now, and um, I'll tell you what, he didn't get a fair shake, and, and we knew that, and it's just sad. And our, the American justice system, it, it says on this article, the subheading, equal justice under the law has given way to mob rule and leftist virtue signaling. Let's mm-hmm. talk about this article over at frontpagemag.com, frontpagemag.com. And it starts off by saying the decline of the rule of law and justice in America can be traced in a straight trajectory from Thomas Preston to Jer- Derek Chauvin. So talk about this, Seiko. Let's, let's dive into this because we know um, people were quick to believe the lies, yeah. the, the propaganda and the Marxist-driven talking points of the mainstream media, the Democrat Party and the left um, and it's really disappointing that this is where we are now. And mob rule won in this case, didn't it? Yeah. Um, ironically, this was during the summer of love. Remember that? You know, <laughs> the summer of love. I mean, I just. <laughs> in 2020? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then it carries over into 2021. You know, we have the, uh, the killing of George Floyd. Um, people are still accusing Chauvin of murder. You know, murder involves intent. And involves premeditation. So we need to choose our words very carefully. Uh, mm-hmm. George Floyd was not murdered. Did he die? Yes. But there were other extenuating factors that caused that. It wasn't it wasn't Chauvin's knee on the neck because his knee was not on his neck. Uh, how do we know that? Well, Dave, there's a there's a movie. There's a documentary called The Fall of Minneapolis. And uh, Liz, Liz, um, Liz, I mean, Liz Collins, excuse me, Liz Collins was the was the uh, creator of that, uh, her and another uh, co-creator. But she wrote a book called They're Still Lying. I, I would recommend your listeners and viewers to, to get a copy of that book. You can go on YouTube before hopefully YouTube doesn't take the video down. I would highly encourage everyone, if you have not seen that documentary, uh, The Fall of Minneapolis, at Minneapolis, I believe it is, The Fall of Minneapolis or at Minneapolis. But you can go on YouTube and check it out. Uh, it was a sham. The whole the whole trial was a sham. This man's this, not just not just Chauvin's rights, but the rights of the other officers were violated. Their constitutional rights were violated. Their uh, 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 Fifth Amendment rights were violated. Their Sixth Amendment rights were violated. And even currently, with Derek Chauvin being stabbed, his Eighth Amendment rights uh, were violated. Uh, cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, he has a right to be protected while he is in the custody of of the state or of the government. Uh, right now, he's in a federal institution. Uh, he was stabbed, and so these people's rights as as um, as citizens of this country were violated. And fortunately, now uh, habeas corpus, his rights regarding having his case heard before the U.S. Supreme Court, Dave, has been has been uh, rejected. They don't even want to hear it. So that shows wow. you. Even the cowardice in the highest courts of our nation don't want to touch this with a 10 foot pole. Why? Because they fear man instead of fearing God. And so we can't get any higher than the United States Supreme Court. So if they don't want to hear your case, they don't want to hear your 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 rights that have been violated because there were there were rights violated. Procedural law was violated in this case. Uh, The judge was was a was is a liberal leftist. Uh, The chief of police he lied under oath they lied under oath regarding the the the, the policies of the uh the, the, of the officers their their standards and procedures and what they were to do and were not to do they lied under oath the knee was not on on um george floyd's neck it was on his shoulder and that was one of the standard operating procedures that was that was involved in that case and they they did not even have it admitted it was it was inadmissible they refused to admit it in court And that didn't even come up. And by the way, what we're talking about, friends, is there is a policy, and I can't find it here. They have a a, a three, uh, anyway. It's a police handbook. It's it's, it's, it's it's, a Minneapolis police handbook there. Yes, it is in the Minneapolis police handbook. That that is how you, um, you you need help sometimes when uh, someone is resisting arrest. So this is one of the techniques that they endorsed and they trained their police officers on how to do exactly what Derek Chauvin did. And MRT. Yet, what, say that again? MRT. 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 That's right. 
That's right. So MRT. Now, I am looking at this video, and I would encourage you guys to go watch it before it gets pulled from YouTube. It's on mm -hmm. the Alpha News channel. It's called The Fall of Minneapolis. And I'm looking at the photos back to back of, in the training manual, yes. you've got a, 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 a person that's down with, like George Floyd was, a guy's knee is on his back, of the, between his uh, back shoulder of his shoulder blade, shoulder blade yes. and his neck, and you've got another officer on the other side holding his hands behind his back, and that is exactly what they did to George Floyd, and yet that, you're telling me, Seiko, that wasn't even part of the trial in his defense? That's exactly what I'm saying. They 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 said, in fact, the chief of police was asked the question, is this a is this a Minneapolis police, you know, policy procedure? Is this found in your in your procedure? The chief of police lied under oath and said, no, it is not. I believe there was another superior that also testified under oath saying I mean, she, she was a female. She said, I don't know where these officers got that 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 technique from it's in the handbook oh, it's geez. in the handbook you can see it on the yeah. video in yeah. fact the the uh the mother of chauvin uh she had two handbooks up and said yeah. that the chief of police were lying and and they even cited the 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 actual text in the handbook showing that this is the technique that you use when a person is resisting arrest even when they're prone you don't put the knee on the neck of course and they didn't do that but at different angles what the media showed us was facing Chauvin, but they now show the 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 other side of the angle, the the uh, the police angle where the camera, uh, the body cam was shown. It was on the shoulder blade. It was not on the neck. And again, this is the this is the narrative that had been spun, uh, not just what, about the technique, uh, about them um, uh, having uh, aid rendered to to George Floyd. Within minutes of them encountering George Floyd, they contacted the EMTs. The yes. EMTs got the wrong information. They didn't even go to the place on site that they were directed to go to. It was a mess. And by the way, there was a fire department, I believe, blocks away, nine blocks yes. away for something like that. And they should have called 911 because nobody came. For, it took them a long time. We've got to take a very quick break. We'll be right back with Seiko Woods. Today's show is brought to you by Harbinger's Daily. World news biblically understood. Stay informed at harbingersdaily.com. So the article we're talking about is called Derek Chauvin's Ongoing Nightmare Epitomizes the Decline of America. And we're talking about the justice system that is found at frontpagemag.com. Seiko, I'm just going to read a little bit of this. Uh, we don't hear, uh, rarely hear that George Floyd was a serial offender and a drug addict. But I'm going to read this quote from the article and have you respond to it. Despite his criminal record and lack of accomplishment in life, George Floyd has become a hero and a secular saint, a symbol of the injustice against which all decent people must struggle. Scholarships are now offered in his name at North Central University, Alabama State, Oakwood University, Missouri State University, Southeast Missouri State, Ohio University, Buffalo State College, Cooper Copper Mountain College, and other allegedly academic institutions. Murals honor Floyd in Minneapolis, Houston, Naples, Belfast, Manchester, England, Dallas, Miami, Los Angeles, Nairobi, Oakland, Berlin, and Pensacola. I'm going to stop right there because it's, <laughs> it's so disturbing if you know yeah. the character and yeah. the true background of this man it's so disturbing what the, what the left and the media has success, successfully been able to do. Your thoughts? Well, this is the same man who held a pregnant woman at gunpoint and um, accosted her, raided her home. Um, the media doesn't want you to know that. Nope. The media doesn't want you all to know uh, his background, like you mentioned. Uh, this man was not a saint. And, and we know yeah, all of, none of us are saints. We're not talking about that. But none of us are robbing pregnant women at gunpoint. None of us have a, a criminal history like George Floyd had and then yet claim to be a saint. Matter of fact, George Floyd lied the whole entire time when he was when he was being detained and arrested. Prior to his arrest, he lied about being shot. He never was shot. Uh, he lied about his mother dying, just dying that, during that same time he was arrested. That, that didn't happen. His mother died two years before he was arrested in this altercation. Uh, he, he also had, uh, uh, I, I believe it was it was that either... Uh, 
he had he had a, he had drugs on his on his tongue. I'm not sure whether it was a crack rock or some type of uh, 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 drug that was on his tongue. Yes, you can see that in the camera. You can see that on the video. Uh, they still framed it. Uh, he he lied about a lot of stuff. Um, now we're not. I'm not saying, and I'm pretty sure Dave and other the viewers are saying, oh, he deserved to die. No, but there's 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 consequences to the choices that you and I make. What would have happened if George Floyd would have complied? How about that? We don't want to talk about that. We don't want to mention the C word because the C word is a cuss word to the left. The C <laughs> word is a cuss word to, the, to those who are activists that don't want to stand for justice. But the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 15, he who justified the wicked and condemned the righteous, both are an abomination to the Lord. So we have people that are now praising the wicked, praising the unrighteous. Uh -oh. Putting the unrighteous on murals and 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 dedicating days and roads. Idolatry, and idolatry. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and and people who are standing for, for justice, people who are protecting, you know, the innocent and are enforcing the law, they're the ones that should be condemned. That's an inversion of, of righteousness. Minneapolis was a war zone because of this. Um, so many things. I mean, from that video, I'm thinking about the video that I watched the fall of Minneapolis. Um, yeah. But I, I, I want to go back to the autopsy. He did yeah. have fentanyl in his system. And I think I read or I saw in the video, there were three different substances that either mm -hmm. had on him or in his system. Do you know the particulars of that, Seiko? I, I've, I've seen the autopsy report. I can't recall the, the names of the uh, different substances that he had in his system, but it was more than, it was more than just uh, 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 fentanyl. Was it opium? Was that one of them? I think so. Some type of narcotic. Um, but he also had okay. he also had uh, core mobility issues. He had a uh, uh, he had heart, heart. issues. Also. Yes. His lungs also were uh, were were damaged as well because of the drugs that he was taking over time. OK, so Derek Chauvin has become a symbol of racism and they mm -hmm. it's it's well, what amazes me is how quickly the protest took off. Mm -hmm. And professional banners and signs already were made. And uh, this was back, you know, right, right after it happened uh, on that Memorial Day weekend. And it's it, since then, America has never been the same um, yeah. between that and COVID and a host of other things. But uh, is there anything else you'd like to add maybe from the, the video, something that jumped out at you that you were shocked by or surprised by in uh, the video, The Fall of Minneapolis? I mean, them them having to the police having to surrender the entire the entire station over to the mob was another thing. Um, That's right. I would say this as well, though, David. I, I was I think what made what, what was shocking to me, not that the fact that the police had gave up their the, the the station, not because they wanted to, but because they were ordered to. Mm. They were ordered to give to it up. Stand they were down. To stand down. Surrender. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they were left as sitting ducks. They were. They were not allowed to have on any type of riot gear. Uh, so this was all planned. This was all plotted. Uh, the thing that angers me also as well is that the uh, the media lied. Al Sharpton lied saying he was a man of he, that, that that George Floyd died as uh, died healthy. He was a healthy man. That's a lie. He was not a healthy man. Um, uh, uh, what's the guy, the, uh, the, the mayor Fry, mayor Fry, I forgot his first name. He lies. He's trying to now, you know, uh, virtue signal when he was at the funeral of, uh, of George Floyd, uh, leaning and crying and kneeling toward the casket, you know, I'm like, man, spare me the, spare me the drama, spare me the drama. Uh, but what the ironic thing is, is that you don't hear any of this outrage. You don't hear any of this anger, any of this protesting when Tony Temper had died at the hands of the police in Dallas years ago. Nobody mentions Tony Temper. Tony Temper, but basically, uh, he called for the police to help him because he had a a uh, a mental a mental episode, and mm. they kneeled on this man. And matter of fact, it was not just one police officer; it was several police officers that had him in a prone position, and he died. And he was and he was being mocked and jeered at by the police. Hmm. Nobody mentions about George. Nobody mentions about Tony Temple, but everybody wants to mention George Floyd as though he was a saint. This man, Tony Temple, was 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 requesting and asking for police to help him, and he died at the hands of the police. That's who we should be angry and mad about of how this innocent individual died. But but George Floyd, uh, his consequences actually caused his death, not the other way around. Oh, all we can do is direct people to the sources like this in, in this well-done documentary, um, The Fall of Minneapolis. And friends, it's not an easy thing to watch. Yeah. Because as soon as you see from the be beginning, you're going to realize what the media did not on purpose show you. 
and what they did not report. So you will be angry at the media. You will then be angry at our government and all the lies that were put out because of this and the billions of dollars in damage to America in and the inner cities and minority businesses. Seiko, there were people that lost their lives. A black police officer in St. Yeah. Louis was, yeah. was shot. There were minority business owners that lost their businesses, blacks and Hispanics. I, we're not going to get to the other articles, right. by the way. This is important to talk about. Yeah. Uh, just a couple minutes left. Just your thoughts on whatever you'd like to share about this. I mean, you know, we, we need to start waking up as a people, uh, as, as believers, first and foremost. Uh, but as black people, if, if there are any of you who are black and you are supporting a party that you believe has been uh, supporting you, just look at the history of the Democratic Party since day one, since its inception. They never had your best interests at heart and they mm. still don't today. It's just a different form of lynching. Now they're lynching people from the womb. They first were lynching us at tree in, at, on, on trees, but now they're doing it in the womb. And they're really you, we're, you and I are allowing them to do it. They're not. They're not going into our homes and and gutting our our women. No, we're allowing our women to go to these abortionaries and having a uh, for a small fee having our children who is our our legacy and the next people that are going to come up in this generation being snuffed out among us at the hands of a party that does not care about us. So we just have to wake up. Thank you for saying that. Um, people, unfortunately, don't know as much about Fred Frederick Douglass and so many other uh, black men of God and of character right. and uh, that were conservative, um, a lot of Christians. And that party has taken a whole uh, demonic direction, if I can say it That's that right. clear, clearly. Uh, Seiko, your final thoughts. Uh, again, I just I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. I would get, I would encourage you all to go to the website. Matter of fact, if you can't find that on 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 YouTube, go to Rumble and check out the Fall of Minneapolis. If get uh, Liz Collins' book, Shameless Plug. I don't get no endorsement from, but I believe in supporting people who support the truth. Get her book. It's called They're Still Lying. It's very helpful. It'll inform you. Amen, brother. That's why I support you because you support the truth. <laughs> Appreciate hey, it, brother. Likewise. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Uh, we're going to have a flurry of activity between now and Christmas as we celebrate Christmas with our family in Christ and our, um, you know, earthly families. And Lord willing, we'll see you early in the new year at some point. But God bless you. Thanks for being on. God bless you as well, brother. Thank you for having me on as well. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, brother. All right, friends, I forgot to mention the mug that you could have by helping us with our fundraiser going on now between now and Christmas. We're raising some production costs for Worldview Matters. One side of the mug, it says Worldview Matters, and my tagline is on the other side. If you could give a one-time gift of $200 or more, or you can uh, $25 a month, uh, that would help us out as well. And I know some of you don't give to get anything back, but this is what we want to do. We want to bless you with this, these really high-quality mugs. But we really appreciate your prayers. And sharing is most important because we're somewhat uh, censored, shadow banned on social media. So sharing the show is one of, after prayer for this ministry. That's one of the most important things you can do. Well, thanks again. And by the way, make sure to get to the book, uh, Salt on the Image of God, tomorrow night at Freedom Project Studios in Appleton, Wisconsin. We are going to have a live presentation. I'll be speaking on my book, Assault on the Image of God. We'll be able to live stream it as well, but that's tomorrow, 7 p.m. You can get the information on Facebook. Thanks again, friends. God bless you. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter.